happy evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure again to be invited, and also my pleasure to be having you all to listen to what a Toastmaster Cup looks like outside of the United States. I'm a hawker myself. I really don't claim that because I've left this place so long, a long time ago. I want to come back, find the route, and what an opportunity to use Toastmaster as an avenue. I like the way how you evaluate, especially the evaluation portion for table topics. In the United States, we do not evaluate for table topics, no time. <laughs> but you pay attention to detail. You go after the specifics, the way how we can improve in our speech, whether they are impromptu or they are prepared speeches, which are the three speaker tonight. I also like the way how you pay attention to the audience, how the audience react. Uh, Mr. Lau talk about the world champion speaker. You have to get their attention in 30 seconds or less. It's like going for a job interview. Your resume, people will read it for seven seconds only. Another important thing I learned by watching those world champion speaker is how they are able to use the audience feedback and to get a sense what the audience like. For example, you, Andy, you should be the joke master. You're very humorous. I like your joke about wine and chocolate. Who doesn't like that? Anywhere in the world, especially in the US, including junk food, but I don't think they're Madonna anymore, so just for attention. Another thing I like about speaking is you're able to share your ideas, and some of the speakers tonight talk about these points, how to share knowledge, share your skills with other people. But speaking is only the small portion of it. The other big portion, the non-verbal, or we in the US we call non-verbal cue, are the body language, the eye contact, the facial expression, whether you're happy, your focal variety, it's all in your speeches, you see many. That's a count of 75%. Not when I'm talking, but when I'm not talking. Do you pay attention to people? Do you pay attention to what you speak? At my club in the US, we also have a role called master listener. His or her job as a master listener is to listen to all the speeches, all the table topics, all the different evaluation sessions, and at the end of the session, quiz, like taking a test, quiz, what did speaker Stevens said, what did speaker Lau said, what did speaker Jackson said. This re-emphasize re the point that you have to listen in order to learn. Listening is a key part of speaking. Speaking is important for you to listen. The way how you become a better speaker like those guys, yeah, learn how to listen, learn how to watch, and also learn how to practice. Practice makes perfect. Yes, you guys are overachiever. This is not an insult. This is a constructive feedback I want to give it. But use that advantage. Use the advantage that you're different in Hong Kong. You're different in this big metropolis city. I love it. Love the food here. I want to buy the t-shirts that I love Hong Kong right now and walk back. So, can't find it. But <laughs> I love to share that experience with you, you know, as an immigrant in the U.S. and now coming back here to chasing back, not just for Toastmaster, but look back, you know, what have I done? What have I spent my earlier life here, my childhood and my king's life, you know, in college, in secondary school. It's important to use Toastmaster, not just as a place to practice, to be elated, but more importantly, to learn. So take that away back, like those visitors here tonight from the company, take that back to your company, take that back to your personal life. What can you break that out? What can you learn from it? And what can you walk away? Like in Cantonese, back my part if I don't speak Cantonese right. Or Hoi Lo Mian Zhao. Or Hoi Lo Mian Zhao. What can I take away from? What can I walk away from? Thank you very much. Thank you.